Saint Ignatius, also referred to as Ignatius the Gordbearer of Antioch, is named Theophorus or Gordbearer as he constantly bore the name of the living God in his heart and on his lips. According to the tradition, the child mentioned in Matthew 18.4 is believed to be Ignatius, of whom Christ said, Whosoever, therefore, shall humble himself as this little child, the same is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Being remembered for his association and direct disciplineship with the apostles and evangelists, St. John the Theologian, he is one of the immediate successors to the apostles. This church father became the third bishop of Antioch in 68 AD. As bishop of Antioch, Ignatian governed the church of God as a good shepherd, being the first to introduce antiphonal chanting in the church, in which two choirs alternate the chanting. This manner of chanting was revealed to St. Ignatius by the angels in heaven and is kept by the church until today. When Emperor Trajan was to leave Antioch to go to Parthus, Ignatius was brought before him, and having conversed much regarding the faith of Christ, the emperor realized that his mind was unchangeable. Therefore, Emperor Trajan summoned St. Ignatius to be tortured violently. However, Ignatius remained unharmed from all these tortures through divine grace. The emperor then had him sent bound to Rome in order to be given over to the wild beasts to be devoured and made an example of. The saint therefore passed through every region, writing to and encouraging the churches he passed along the way. Ignatius rejoiced in suffering for the Lord, only praying to God that the wild beast would become the tomb for his body and that no one would prevent him from this death. After a long and difficult journey from Asia, through Thrace, Macedonia and Epirus, Ignatius arrived in Rome, where he was thrown to the lions in the circus. The lions tore him to pieces and devoured him, leaving only several of the larger bones and his heart. When he was brought to the circus, he turned to the people with these words, Citizens of Rome, know that I am not being punished for any crime, neither have I been condemned to death for any transgressions, but rather for the sake of my God, by whose love I am overcome and whom I insatiably desire. I am his wheat and the teeth of the wild beasts will grind me to be his pure bread. The glorious lover of God was martyred around the year 107 AD in Rome at the time of the Christ-hating Emperor Trajan. Ignatius has appeared many times after his repose, working many miracles, even to this day helping all who call upon him for help. On his journey to be martyred in Rome, St. Ignatius wrote seven letters which have survived to this day. These epistles are one of the earliest Christian texts outside of the scripture and are indispensable to us in what they reveal. He wrote these letters to Christians in places such as Ephesus, Smyrna and Rome. He also wrote to St. Polycarp, the Bishop of Smyrna. St. Ignatius left us these seven archpastoral epistles in which he provides profound instructions on faith, love and good works. He also urged his flock to preserve the unity of the faith and to be aware of heretics. These letters are still read fervently to this day and are essential read for all Christians. One of Ignatius's most famous quotations, however, comes from his letter to the Romans, where he exhorts his fellow Christians to not prevent his martyrdom, but rather poetically shows us what life and death really are for us Christians.